it's about a Batman or M cubed. How's everybody doing today? Now it's about 80 degrees here, and as you can see, sunshine. Now it hadn't been that way every day the last week. This is the second time making this video. <laughs> Between the rain that we've had, which we've had thunderstorms and whatnot, between that and the fact that some dipstick didn't have their GoPro turned on, we're doing the video over. Now, I've gotten so used to using the remote for my chin mount GoPro and turning it on and off and being able to look at that to see if, if the GoPro's on and recording. And the last time I did this, I was like, well, I don't need that, so I'm not gonna mess with it. It's one last thing I gotta fiddle with. I'll just go out and do it. Well. This camera was on, this camera wasn't on, which isn't necessarily that big a deal, except the audio is captured through this camera, so there was no audio. So we're doing this all over again. I got a couple things to talk about. Uh, number one thing to talk about is I'm gonna go ahead and try to do the budget bike resurrection deal. I've set up a GoFundMe. The target is three grand, but that's what is listed on the GoFundMe. We don't need to get to three grand. I would like to be there because we can get a little bit better bike and spend a little bit more putting stuff on it. But like I said before, Mrs. Moto Matman is all for this, just not spending our money to do it because she thinks it's worth a try but doesn't think it'll work. So, here's the deal. Let's prove her wrong. Now, in doing it, Mrs. Moto Matman is going to help. So, she's going to be in the videos. Um, the idea is for her to help with doing any of the, the, the work to the bike. And it also gives an opportunity for her to try out a different bike. Because she's ridden her dual sport that she started out on which was a 125 cc two stroke um dual sport you know on off road bike um it's a 1977 k kawasaki ke 125 she's ridden that on the street wow this wasn't going on yesterday this is different but obviously she's ridden that and outside of that the only thing she's ever ridden is a Sportster her Sportster and my Sportster and that's it that's it uh, redoing the bridge or at least uh, bridge guardrail deal but anyway so all she's ever ridden is a sportster so whatever bike it is that we end up with she'll ride that before and after we do any modifications to it which would be good for her but anyway that's what that is again set up a GoFundMe I'll have the link in the description on this video um, you know I, I would I would appreciate the to help with it so that we can actually do this um, so we got that going on the other thing I want to talk about is as you can see I don't have on my normal Alpine Stars jacket today there's nothing wrong with my Alpine Stars jacket I just don't have it on today um, I wanted to try this out I, I normally only wear this jacket um, when it's 
there's a little bit of a chill in the air or it's there's a possibility of rain um, it, it has a zip-in liner and I took the zip-in liner out and opened up all the vents and it's got vents here on the front on the sleeves and on the back and I opened those up to see what it was like with with the liner out as far as riding it in warm weather and I will say I mean been moving the whole time so so far so good it's been okay you know it's just one of those things I, I wanted to give it a give it a shot and let's see how it works out okay next thing the next thing is the big thing what in the world is going on in the world have people absolutely positively lost their ever-loving freaking mind okay here's the deal some football players from Chardon High School and as you guys are, are I'm sure well aware um, I live outside of Chardon whenever we go into town go to Walmart go to the auto parts store go to Home Depot a lot of the times when we go out to eat at a restaurant, we're going into Shard. Okay? First game of the football season. Guys from the Shard football team run out onto the field carrying a thin blue line flag. Now, for those of you that don't know what a thin blue line flag looks like, it's right here. Okay. It is an American flag that's usually like black and white or black and gray and it's got a one of the stripes is a blue line and as a matter of fact there's one right there and what that flag is for is that flag is to show support for the police okay well a little bit of backstory on Chardon High School February the 27th 2012 was the darkest day probably in the history of Chardon. There was a school shooting at the high school. And then for more information, you can you can Google it. It's all over the place. I mean, to be honest with you, if you Google Chardon, if you Google Chardon, Ohio, probably the first thing that'll come up is the high school shooting. But anyway, there was a shooting at the high school a student went in and started an open fire in the high school. The police and fire and EMS arrived on the scene like like that. Liggety split. Like that. And currently one of the assistant coaches of the Chardon High School football team is a police officer. So these guys were carrying that flag out onto the field to honor him and the first responders. They also said that part of it had to do with the fact that, you know, when the pandemic hit, these people were people that did not have that time down. They weren't told stop working, stay safe, stay home. They were people that were out there in the community performing their duties, their job, as always. Okay, so it was, it was a shout out to them as well. Well, the superintendent of schools, once that once they ran out on the field, has banned the thin blue line flag at high school football games, any kind of official school functions, and from school property. Because even though the kids weren't doing it, for any reason other than to honor the police, he said it could be seen as a racist symbol. Are you freaking nuts? Really? Now here's the thing, we're in Chardon now. This is not a big metropolitan area. If you, Even if you wanna say that showing support for the police is somehow racist i don't know how you could say that but if you say that that it could be counter to the black lives matter movement okay maybe maybe i could 
see you trying to make that argument in Minneapolis, in Seattle, in some of these places where they're having these these protests and skirmishes with the police and whatnot. Not here. You know, I don't know how how else to put it, but Chardon, Ohio is kind of Ohio's version of Mayberry, you know? The, the relationship that the people in the community have with the police department here is is like like on the Andy Griffith show they had with Andy Griffith's character Andy Taylor I mean there's not a real racial divide here you know I mean are there people in the community that are racist? Yeah, I'm sure there are. I mean, there are people in every community on the planet that are. But by and large, I really haven't seen it. Um, and the kids were trying to honor their assistant football coach and the police officers that responded when there was the shooting at the high school. This is short. I mean, we just cut through the square. I've taken you guys around the square many times, and I think we'll go up here and we'll turn a little ways up here, and then we'll go back up and through the square again. But it's one of those things, I mean, come on. It, it wasn't anti Black Lives Matter. It wasn't racist in any way, and I don't know how the flag, that flag could be construed as being racist. But there's been a big uproar over banning that flag from the school grounds. Um, the members of the local FOP have come out and asked for the resignation of the superintendent of schools and so have people on the Chardon Town Council and residents and everything else because it's absolutely ridiculous. And it's not like it was something that they did all the time anyway. It was a one-time thing. It was the first game of the season. But, you know, it, it... I don't know. Like I said, have... Has the world lost its mind? You know, I, I think some of the stuff is being taken a bit too far and people are being a little bit too sensitive and butthurt over things that that don't exist like we're looking for there to be problems for the boogeyman to be around every every corner you know behind every hiding behind every tree and we're reading into things you know one of the things when I was growing up I had a problem with with American lit classes and English lit classes and part of the reason I did was because the teachers wanted you to look for symbolism in everything. Everything had some kind of symbolism. And one of the problems I had was in Shakespeare plays, why can't a knife just symbolize a knife? You know, the whole thing, why did Shakespeare use a knife? Knife for this character to commit murder. Why was it a knife? Why was it poison? What did it mean? Okay, here's the deal. We didn't have rocket launchers when he when he wrote that. There were no tanks, no hand grenades, okay? Used a knife because the knife was available. Used poison because poison was available. Okay? That's why. Okay? 
There were no James Bond type devices when Shakespeare was writing his plays. Maybe the damn knife just represented a knife and nothing more. It's just what he had handy. You know, why does everything have to mean everything? Why does there have to be some hidden meaning behind the kids using the thin blue line flag? Why can't it just be what they said it is? And it is a way to honor the, the, the local police and the assistant coach on the football team. See, this is the Chardon Square. Okay? I mean, you sleepy little town. I mean, you got a square full of restaurants, antique shops. I mean, there's a tattoo joint. Um, you know, but why, why must we look for there to be something in everything? Why can't we take some things just on face value? artisan to stroll around Chardon Square. Upcoming events. Like I've talked about before, the square is where all kinds of things go on here. Uh, all kinds of festivals. You spring festivals, the maple festival, the fall fest, where kids decorate pumpkins and make um, scarecrows and stuff. Thompson Police and the State Highway Patrol. Huh. But, uh, oh, and there's a winter fest where they even have like sled dogs and whatnot. But again, why, why can't we just look at things the way they are? Now, I am not saying turn a blind eye to things. Okay. I'm not saying that all cops are good. There are bad cops. There are bad people in every profession there is. There are. I mean, look, there's been a problem with, with priests and um, committing sex crimes against children. I mean, so look. There is, there are bad people in every p profession. But you can't look at the bad cops and say all cops are bad. And you can't look at the good cops and say all cops are good because they're not all good and they're not all bad. They're human beings. They, they're flawed. They're good ones, they're bad ones. And the bad ones need to be punished. And to be perfectly honest with you, the good cops will tell you that the bad cops need to be punished. You know, so I'm not saying turn a blind eye to anything. But, I'm also not saying that, that we need to read into shit. We don't. We need to take things at face value. But anyway, that's enough of me on my soapbox. I just wanted to, wanted to vent a little bit and ask what the heck is going on in the world? Has everybody gotten dumb as a box of rocks? You know, people need to relax and lighten up a little bit. I mean, we got enough crap going on in the world with with the damn pandemic and crap being shut down, not being able to do the things that we're used to doing. We don't need to try to make more problems by looking at stuff sideways to try to make everything be a problem. But anyway, to recap, we're going forward with uh, the budget bike restu uh, resurrection, looking for uh, a cheap bike to buy and to make cooler. We're not looking at buying some basket case bike and uh, turning it into something that uh, needs to be in a bike show. That's not what we're doing. We're taking a bike to a cheap bike 
and we're trying to make it a little bit cooler than what it already is and showing that that your average rider can can do this with average hand tools no super special skills needed to make a bike a little bit cooler mainly for I'm guessing for beginner rider kind of thing okay hopefully we can do that and the idea is we buy the bike we do simple things like clean and lube the chain change the brake fluid change the oil put fresh gas in it replace anything that has to be replaced for safety reasons like tires and whatnot and then do some things like swapping out mirrors swapping out levers if possible stuff like that making the bike a little bit cooler swapping out the grips make it a little bit cooler and then sell it and hopefully make a few bucks on it and then repeat the process that's the idea and along the way getting mrs moto Mapman some experience on riding different bikes and doing things to bikes you know simple maintenance and so forth that's the idea um trying out the viking cycle ironborn jacket that i've had for over a year now without the liner in it to see how it works in warm weather as long as you're moving it's good i don't know if you lived in the city and were having to do a lot of stop and go traffic how it would be uh, i still think the alpine stars is a better ticket for that but this is this is cool cooler than I thought it would be with all the vents open and as opposed to the Alpine Stars this one is waterproof water resistant whatever it says waterproof I don't know how waterproof it is um, but normally that's what I wear I wear it if there's a chance of rain and normally I keep the liner in it and I wear it when it's there's a chill in the air so give it a, at least a one thumb up. Maybe we give it a two thumbs up. I don't know. Two, one, I don't know. If you're in stop and go traffic all day long, one thumb. Okay. Um, let's see, what else we got? Oh, people need to stop being stupid. <laughs> and that's a reference to what I talked about with the thin blue line flag. So here's the thing. If you're stupid, stop being stupid. Okay? <laughs> Let's make everybody stop being stupid. Gotta stop in for a smoky thing. <laughs> but anyway, I guess that's where we can leave it. I'll just leave it there. I'm gonna go in and get me a smoky thing. Um, you know, if you like what you saw, click the like and subscribe button. You know, if you haven't already, punch that bell so you get notifications whenever I upload any new content. I try to do it on Wednesdays. Today is Wednesday. So it's not getting uploaded today. So it'll probably be tomorrow. If you're able to get out on two wheels, hopefully you can. Remember, keep the shiny side up and the rubber side down. And as always, have an awesome day. Until next time, see ya.